Hey guys, today we're back with another firearms review. And today on the channel, we'll be reviewing the H&K VP9. Stay tuned for this one. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. Once again, today we're gonna to be doing the range review on the H&K VP9. Uh, without further ado, this uh, firearm here was lended to me by Center Target Firearms and Range in London, Kentucky. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can check them out if you'd like to. Uh, you can go and click that link, it'll take you straight to their website, show you everything that they have in stock and multiple other items that are online only. Uh, also, if you're local here in Kentucky, swing by, check out the range, got one of the nicest ranges I've seen and uh, check out everything that they have in stock. So guys, once again, thank you to Center Target Firearms and Range for letting me review this firearm. All right, guys, let's jump on into it. Uh, the H&K VP9, this is unloaded, so it is safe to talk about. Uh, the H&K VP9 is a 4.09 inch barrel. Uh, so you're kind of in the realm of a Glock 19. Uh, it, the only thing that's different from the Glock 19 whenever it comes to size as well is that these are standard capacity with 17 rounds instead of 15. So that's pretty interesting. I like that. High capacity or actual standard capacity is always, uh, always good. Uh, this is a striker fired pistol and uh, is really the first H&K pistol as in this type of pistol, not saying the SP5, but this is the first H&K pistol I've actually ever reviewed. I picked up this one and a P30 to review, and we'll have the P30 review out as well if we haven't already. And also we'll have a review between, a uh, versus review between the VP9 and the P30, so stay tuned for that one. But uh, this gun right here was one that H&K uh, produced to try and get into the law enforcement field. Uh, this gun right here actually is very, very uh, used in European uh, countries whenever it comes to actual firearms uh, or law enforcement. Uh, this gun right here really isn't, uh, hasn't taken off in uh, the United States yet. Most uh, law enforcement in the United States still carry a Glock uh, 17 or 34 or 22 or 35, depending on which model that they choose, but Glock still has uh, the uh, title for the United States. But like I was saying, European, uh, they try to take the H&K more than anybody. Uh, so 4.09 inch barrel, so you get some decent accuracy out of this. The rear sight is a serrated sight, uh, no dots or anything else. The front sight is a big green dot that is also a night sight, so that is good as well. Uh, this gun right here has one of the best, um, one of the best striker fired triggers that I've ever felt in that firearm, to be honest with you. Uh, you get and you hit that wall and it's just a straight break. There's no uh, sponginess or anything to it like in the clock. You just uh, take, you get that take up, took out of it and bingo, the wall. Uh, this firearm also as well has a uh, indicator here on the rear end to where whenever you have it to where it can shoot, there will be a uh, green, or not green, but a red dot pop up for ready to fire. So if you have one in the chamber and you see that, then that means that the gun can go off when you pull the trigger. Uh, this gun does not have a safety on it. It has a lock back here on the side that's kind of hard to hit. Uh, so this is more of a gun to where whenever you run empty, throw a new mag in it, you need to slingshot it, let it go, and there you go. Uh, takedown on this gun is very simple as well. If you have a takedown uh, lever, lever here, so all you have to do is pull it back, twist this down, let the slide off, and it will come straight off. Uh, we're not going to do that though because YouTube is still hit and miss whenever it comes to uh, takedown videos and all that. But this gun is uh, surprisingly, or not really surprisingly, but it is a very accurate gun. Uh, I really enjoyed my time whenever I was shooting it. It took me a second to get used to that, uh, that striker fire trigger because like I said, it is a great trigger, don't get me wrong, but whenever I'm used to more Glocks and everything else, it was a tad bit hard to get used to. Whenever you're aiming down the sides, you can take it up. You gotta make sure that you have your trigger finger right exactly where you want to, most of the time in the index of it. But I use that first uh, bend in it most of the time for most of the firearms I use. But if you have your uh, index finger right on it, and you pull it, you will not get any pull to left or right. So it's a very, very nice pull on it. Uh, something I liked a lot about it really, uh, the trigger to be exact. The, uh, 
Back of the slide here also has inserts to where whenever you're needing to rack it, you have something to grab a hold on to. Uh, the actual cutouts here in the slide are very uh, nice as well. I can get a good purchase on them if I needed to rack it back, but it has these back here on the back that you can actually hook your hand into if you need to rack it, depending on which way you rack, either this way or this way. So that's nice. The biggest thing I don't like about this firearm is the uh, magazine release. As you can see here, it is a European style of paddle release. It's not an actual button like on most firearms nowadays. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of hit and miss because uh, the VP9 actually does come out with models that have a standard uh, uh, magazine release like most firearms. So if that's something that's aggravating you, you can take that and get that model instead of the uh, actual paddle release. It is also a uh, Picatinny rail up here in front so you can mount lasers and lights as well. Uh, going back to the magazine release though, whenever you've got it in a full grip, click, slide reciprocate, whenever I'm trying to throw out that magazine, I cannot throw it out while I have it in a full grip as you see here. I can't even hit it with my thumb because it's so far away. Uh, I have seen some different types of reloads where people will actually take their secondary hand, hit this to release a magazine, strip the magazine, put the new one in, I've also seen it to where they will just barely hit it up here in front where you clear your hand away from the grill and it will drop out. And I've also seen people take uh, their middle finger here and kind of wrap or claw it and let it go that way. Uh, neither way is really that quick. Uh, to be the quickest with this gun for me anyway was to uh, break your grip, bring it over to the side, hit it with your thumb, release it, throw it back in, bring your grip back around drop the slide, and go to town. Um, so there's multiple different ways that you can actually work this to how you like it, but to me, I think the best way was, for me anyway, was breaking my grip, bringing the gun around a tad bit, hitting it with my thumb, throwing it back in, re-racking, and going back down. So this firearm has a lot of uh, a lot of different models. You have the VP9, VP9L, which is a long slide, five inch. You have the VP9 Match, which is a 5.5 inch barrel. Uh, you also have a VP9K, which is the subcompact one. Uh, that's just for it off the top of my head, and I'm for certain that there's more than that. Uh, like I said, this is the first H&K pistol I've ever actually reviewed. Not that I didn't like H&K or anything like that, because you all know I love H&K. I actually have a H&K shirt on right now. The SP5 and the SP5K is some of my favorite firearms ever built. But whenever it comes to pistols, I've always been more in the Glock, Smith & Wesson, stuff like that. I never really did get into the H&K pistols much. Uh, but this one right here was really, really nice, and I liked it a lot. Uh, I don't think it's really one that will take the law enforcement uh, contracts away from Glock in the United States anyway, uh, mainly because I did come out with this gun around the 2014 era, and I haven't seen many other, uh, if any, at all law enforcement agencies in the United States carry this. Most of them either go for Glock, and if they're not going for Glock, going for the Smith & Wesson MP2, uh, and if not that, they're going for the P320 like the military has. But very nice gun overall, and I really did like it. So if this is something you're interested in, I would 100% recommend it. Uh, the grip feels amazing on it. feels just like it fits my hand like a glove, so I can't uh, say anything bad about that. It does have the finger grooves in it, so some of y'all might not like that, but I do enjoy these finger grooves. Uh, they're actually better finger grooves than on the Glock. Overall, this is one of my favorite uh, polymer firearms I reviewed, if not my probably second favorite, because Glock's always my favorite, uh, just because of how used to I am with them and everything like that. But now, this gun right here was nice, and I really did enjoy reviewing it. So guys, if you have any questions or comments on the H&K VP9, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But thank you again for viewing, and thank you again to Center Target Firearms and Range in London, Kentucky, for letting me review this firearm. Once again, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below so it will take you straight to their website and you can check out everything they have. Guys, thank you again, and I'll see you all in the next video.